Oh. It's gonna be an O. When letters are not sure what to say, what do they say? Uh. Then I had a great idea. Good readers make predictions. But it's really important for me to share these things with you too. Like it doesn't go great all of the time. And when it doesn't go great, these are the things that I'm doing. Friend, welcome back to my channel. My name is Maylene Call from Mrs. Call's Campers. If you're new here, I am a kindergarten and first grade combo teacher this year. Just some quick backstory in case you actually are new. I started my career in Tennessee where I'm from. My husband's in the military. We are currently in California. This is my first year at this school. I'm loving it. It's been wonderful. I've vlogged every single week since I've been here. So you can kind of see our rhythm, our flow, how we've grown. Um, if you haven't seen that playlist, you can check it out up here. But it is January 24th. I actually don't have too much time to talk this morning unfortunately but I'm excited because it is cookie butter Monday still loving those boomerangs on Instagram that you tagged me in I got my wisdom teeth out last not last Friday the Friday before yeah the Friday before last I've been suffering ever since this is my first real day back in the classroom I ended up having to take that whole last week mostly I went back one day it was a mistake I shouldn't have gone back um, but now I'm rested my jaw's a little sore but this is the first time I'm drinking coffee since I got my wisdom teeth out so just a moment I'm really excited to see my kids. I have some sub notes that I don't really have too much time to go over right this second. Maybe I need to. Oh, isn't it interesting when you get surprised by the sub notes? I left like a stack of read alouds because I was going to be gone a couple days just for the sub to choose from. Um, I also did sub tickets this last time. So I had her give um, a ticket like if they did a good job and I would draw from random prizes. I have our schedule. You can't see that. It's overexposed. <sighs> okay, I'm gonna stop ranting actually because I need to get stuff done before the kids get here today. I did do all of my planning at home, but obviously I didn't do any of the printing, things like that also. My outfit today brought to you by um, 2000s is what I get the vibe, you know? I'm wearing skinny jeans, ballet flats, a striped shirt, and a cardigan. Something about this just screams thousands to me. You know what I mean? Um, some mornings whenever they're doing their fine motor bins or their stem bins or their puzzles I'll let them kind of interact with each other and I'll do a couple of side things that I need to get done Chat with them a little bit and some days I'll just spend the whole time just talking with them um, Checking in with them those types of things So right now I'm going into my Google Drive and one of the biggest tips I have for you especially if you are starting out in the classroom is to Create a Google Drive. I've shown this on my channel before. I'll show it to you really quickly again, how I organize mine. Get it started. <laughs> we are in the new era, the new age of things. Most of us new teachers do not have cabinets of worksheets. And I'm just not that kind of girl anyway. You know, like it's so much easier to have everything digital. You can search it easier. You can see it all easier. And you can look at it from anywhere. So you can prep from anywhere. These are my categories. So I'm just gonna go into literacy, phonics, Oh no. Centers, phonics, and I'm gonna go into this phonics bundle by Miss Giraffe. And long vowels, long U is what we're doing this week. And this is where I get all the things, most of my things. First centers for first grade. I was behind the microphone, so hopefully you could hear me. Um, and I am starting to use a little bit more of Miss Giraffe for kindergarten now. I have a lot of other kindergarten resources that I'm really liking, but that is kind of how I do it and how I organize it. Um, here are my plans for the week in case you want to see that. I don't know if it's focused or not, but we are going to be doing the book Hair Love this week, which I love the book Hair Love. There's also a little short that we're gonna watch too. I'm sticking with addition with my kindergarten right now and then for first grade, we're still doing place value. We should be way ahead of place value right now, but again, last week threw us off and I had a bunch of kids missing. It's been crazy. I will catch up with you guys in just a sec. Okay, it's actually the end of the day. It felt like a whirlwind there at the end because our cleanup was a little insane, but it was a really good day, a really good first day back. Um, I'm still missing quite a few students, not as much as before I left, but that's just how it goes. So I'm just glancing at my planner so I can walk you through um, kind of what happened. So I made a mistake when I was planning. I did the, so let me explain. Wonders sets you up with a, like kind of like a pacing guide. 
Um, so for first grade, we have a phonics skill, we have sight words, and then the decodable text has the phonics skill that we're learning, the sight words of that week in the text. I thought this week we were doing like long U, so that CVC E word with a set of sight words, but I flip flopped it. So the sight words that we learned today are actually supposed to be the ones for next week. And the skill that I put in their center folders were actually supposed to be, it was just all mixed up. So um, that was my bad, but that's okay. Our next word is done. Say done. Done. Say done. Done. Good, done. Like we're over, we're done, we're finished. I want you to look up there at number one and I want you to see how it's spelled. How is it spelled? O N E. O N E spells? One. One. Say one. One. Put a d in front of it. Done. Done. Good. So we're going to tap our sounds. Ready? D. Uh. Mm. What's the first sound? D. D. It's a D. 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 The next sound is a, uh, but what letter is it? Uh, oh. It's going to be an O. Oh. When letters are not sure what to say, what do they say? Uh. Good. So let's put a question mark right here. D. Uh. Good, but there's two letters. What two letters? N E. N E. Done. Good. If I cover up the D, what's this word? One. What's this word? Done. Done. Good. Spell done. Oh, I need everybody to do it. Spell done. D O N E. Done. 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 Good, or clap the syllables. It's one. One syllable, you got it. Word is every, say every. Every. Let's tap the sounds. E, er, e. I want everybody to do it, ready? E, er, e. Good, what's the first sound? E, 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 Good. And the next sound is er. Hold on, Leah, what two letters are we going to write? E-R. Good. In the same box because it's one sound. Ev, er. What's the last sound? E is the last sound, but how are we going to spell it? Y. Good. Every. So really, the only part that we have to pay extra attention to is this er part. And I noticed that it said very. Very, which was already one of our sight words is in the word every. Do you see that? Yeah. Kind of looks like a turtle. Oh, my car? Yeah. Thank you. Ready? Every. E. V. E. R. Y. Every. E. V. E. Three. Three syllables. Oh, my gosh. Around the chin. Around the chin. That's how you write it. You got it, my friend. Luckily, both of the skills that I was supposed to, that I was flip-flopping, we've already learned them because of the secret stories. So <laughs> we're actually covered there. Um, for kinders, we are still working with CBC words. I didn't film any of my literacy today. I was honestly just trying to like get back into it myself. So I didn't film that for you guys. Um, honestly, I should have because the kinders did an amazing job. But we were doing CBC with short O. And so I follow... Um, our Hegarty. This is the first grade version, but Kinder's is blue. My aide has it. And whenever you are listening for that middle sound, you do kind of like a roller coaster. So if you have the word caught, you would say caught, and they would hear that aw sound in the middle, and it kind of emphasizes it. So we did a lot of that. Um, we were reading short O words. We were writing short O words. My jaw here at the end of the day is starting to get to me. Um, and then we did a decodable text that was about firefighters. I really wish I had filmed that because I did a lot of talking with them like about firefighters. What would you see at a firehouse? We saw a little video of fire trucks or not fire trucks of a firehouse afterwards. It was just really fun and really engaging for them. Um, so that was the <laughs> literacy portion. And then we moved into centers, which actually went really, really well I can show you an example of what's in their center folders this week. And if you're not familiar with the center folders and how they work, check out my vlogs, catch up. <laughs> I can't repeat myself every single week, but for my kindergartners, I have kind of ones that are below grade level and kind of ones that are on grade level. So the ones that are on grade level right now, this is the work I'm having them do, which this student actually completed there. So you can see I showed them how to do it. Um, and I told them what the pictures were. So I told them dog, hop, 
um, dot because some of them you do have to kind of tell them what they are and then they sorted them and she did a wonderful job and then this student also did this and it's a little bit harder than the other one I'm about to show you because they're missing the first letter so they had to figure that out by themselves and the student did this independently I'm actually really 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 proud of that student and you'll notice that's actually one of the activities that my first graders started with at the beginning of the year it's still that Miss Giraffe phonics bundle <clears throat> So that's kind of like my on level slash my higher kids. Um, and then for, which she was supposed to do this in word work, but her papers got mixed up. I think she dropped it. Oh, I think, I think that's supposed to be a heart. It does not look like a heart. Um, and then for writing, this is, they trace it and then they write the sentence. Um, and then this was supposed to be word work, but it's just the word families. This one's from Move Mountains and Kinder. So this was a Kinder folder. Another Kinder folder is this. So words with op and words with ought, and they'll sort them. They haven't been to this center yet, so it's not done. They have this, just a simple, hopefully you can see the exposure is a little high. Trace it, write it, trace it, write it. This is the same for both groups, the writing is. Um, and the first couple times they'll do it, they'll forget like the spaces and the punctuation. They'll probably get all the letters, but they'll smush it all together. So I'll be able to talk with them whenever they turn it into me. For first graders, kind of like the, below or on level ones, these. So you circle the right word and then a short U and a long U sort, which long U is a little bit tricky because it can kind of sound like ooh sometimes. And then for writing, just write the word and make a sentence with these. And I hate long U words. They're the hardest ones I think to make sentences with because like first graders don't know what a mule is, you know? Hopefully showing you this gives you an idea of what's in the pack for that phonics bundle and gives you an idea of what I'm expecting my students to do, independently at least. Um, and whenever they come and turn in their center folders, I'll check off the work they do. I'll upload their um, pictures to Class Dojo portfolio. So when I have their center folders open, I'm like, okay, so-and-so got their word work done. Take a picture, put it in Dojo, next person while they're cleaning up. So that's the flow that kind of works really good for me. Um, tomorrow, hopefully I'll have more clips teaching and all that, but for today, that was our literacy. Um, I did pull small groups, that was nice. Math with first grade was really simple. What, that is not match. So what number goes here? So first, I know it's very silly. So first we count the red, and then we write the number. Oh, how many blues did you have? Four. Go ahead and write the number. I can talk more about what I did today in math tomorrow. I think tomorrow I can do more of like a math focus for you guys. But let me know what you are most interested in seeing. I'm gonna hop off and kind of get some housekeeping done since I have been gone for a really long time and I'll catch up with you tomorrow. My turn. My turn. My turn. Good job. When it's my turn, your voice is off. Uh -huh. I need you to look. look. Listen and learn. Learning you are. Participating. Sit on yours. Any book sounds or? We actually, there is some things I'm, we have for this book, um, but since today's the first day, we're just gonna read it, okay? Hair, Hair love. love. We just talked about some of the things that were important to us. We said our dog, our friends, our family, me, life, all teachers, video games, our baby brother. All those things are important to us, right? They mean something to us if it's if something is important to us it matters to us right yes. it's something that we love to have in our life something that we something that we cherish something that's special to us in this book our main character her name is zuri say zuri zuri, zuri has something that's really really special to her and we're going to read about that today this is one of miss Carl's favorite books are you ready yeah. if you need me you can I help you? Um, um, is there, sound there, I think there are sound effects, and there's actually a mini movie. It's called a short. Say short. Short. 
Sorry. It's like a short film, but we're not doing sound effects on the first day because I like to read it on the first day. My name is Zuri, and I have hair that has a mind of its own. It kinks, coils, and curls every which way. I was too excited to sleep. It's a big day. And do you notice this right here? Do you remember what this is called? A thinking bubble. It's a thinking bubble, and we can tell because it's nice and poofy like a cloud. If somebody was talking, it would be pointy, right? Yeah. But it's nice and poofy. And this kitty, you'll see it whenever I let you guys read it later. <clears throat> this kitty is actually thinking about food. So, so far in our book, we have Zuri. Who can tell me what's important to Zuri? Give me a thumbs up if you know what's important to her. Thumbs up if you know. And then whisper to a friend, what's important to Zuri? <laughs> My turn. My turn. You guys are so good at turning your bodies back to me when I say my turn. All right, on the count of three, tell me what's important to Zuri. One, two, three. Her hair. Her hair is important to her. Now, just for fun, what's important to the cat? Food. <laughs> Lately, Daddy has been worn out. What does worn out mean? Who can help me? What does worn out mean? Her. Thank you for raising your hand. The, the clothes get worn out. Clothes can get worn out. What do you think the author means when she says, Daddy has been worn out? Sleepy. Yeah, he's sleepy. He's worn out. What, is, what else? Who can help me with that? Um, what do you think? He's not waking up. Yes, he's very sleepy. He is worn out. You might even say he's ex exhausted, right? Ouch! Daddy yelled. Can you see what happened in this picture? What's he holding? A rubber band. He was holding his rubber band. Now he's holding his eye, and I see a rubber band. What do you think happened? He broke his eye. Yeah. His eye. The rubber band popped off of her hair. Do you see how this puff still has a rubber band? Cause it's yeah. all, and this one doesn't have a rubber band. It popped off, and it went in his eye. Is Zuri's dad very good at helping her with her hair? No. No. I think not very good. <laughs> He's not very good at it. Wait a minute, Daddy said as he reached into the drawer and pulled out a pick. Now, how's that? He asked, pulling a hat down <laughs> over my eyes. <laughs> Daddy, come on. Then I had a great idea. Good readers make predictions. predictions. I want you to think to yourself. What do you think her great idea is going to be? Five, think in your brain. She said, I have an idea. Turn and tell a friend, what do you think her idea is? What's her, how is she gonna get her hair done? What do you need, my friend? My turn. Okay. All right, good readers make predictions. What do you think her great idea is? Um, I've already heard from you, so can I hear from someone else? Remember, a prediction can be anything. No idea. Okay, that's all right. Daddy gathered all the tools we needed and we were set. There's a clue in this picture what her idea is. A tablet right there. Maybe. Why do you think the tablet is the clue? Because it has hair. Do you see what's on the tablet? What does it look like? Hair. 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 It's a video. Hair. Now, raise your hand if you think you know what Zuri's idea is. What do you think her idea is? Her idea is she's going to watch a video that's made by a professional hairstylist. Ooh, that's made by a professional hairstylist. Kind of like a tutorial, right? A tutorial is how you do something. What was important to Zuri? Her hair. Her hair. And at the beginning of the book, listen to what she said. Huh? Zuri. Zuri. Zuri was her name. Who else was important in our story? Her dad. Her dad. And who was the other important person? Her mom. Her mom. The cat was a character, but was it an important? All right, the setting is where at home and when the story happened. And it was at home, but where did most of the, the setting bathroom? take place? The bathroom. Zuri's house in the bathroom. In the beginning. In the beginning. She woke up early because it was a special day. Special day. And then, yes, yeah, she was looking for hairstyles to do because she wanted to look good for who? Dad. Not her dad. Her mom, right? She wanted to look so pretty for her mom. In the middle, 
middle. Her dad tried to help her and did was he doing a good job in the middle? No. No, no but he was trying, right? Yes. That's important is that he was trying, right? I think she was getting a little bit frustrated. Frustrated, yeah, because they tried so many different hairstyles and she just wanted it to be perfect, but nothing was working and she didn't know what to do, but then she had an idea. She had an idea. So what did they do? Yeah, they nailed it, but how, what happened though? They watched a video, right? They watched yeah. a tutorial. Say tutorial. Tutorial. They watched a tutorial on how to do hair. And then who came home? Mom. Mom came home. Asked, why does it look like her hair is yellow here? But in the book, it doesn't look like that. Her head is wrapped up. Can you see this? It's not just a hat. We're going to talk more about it tomorrow. It's not just a hat, but I love that you noticed that detail. Okay, so we know our main character is... Zuri. Zuri. And what do we know about Zuri? If you could describe Zuri, you would say she is... Beautiful. Beautiful. She is... Okay, perfect. She is... Yes, she's obsessed with her hair. And that's a good thing. What else is she? Polite. Yes, what else? Loving. I agree. Now, Zuri's dad, how would we describe him? He was... Great. Great. Why was he great? Because he... He helped her, so he's helpful. What else? He cares about Zuri, right? We can tell he cares about her because he tried so many times to fix her hair. All right, so in the beginning, in the beginning Zuri woke up early, Zuri woke up early because it was a special day. She looked up hairstyles. She looked at hairstyles. In the middle. In the middle. Her dad couldn't get it right. Her dad couldn't get it right. She felt a little frustrated. She felt a little frustrated. In the end, In the end they watched a tutorial. They watched a tutorial. And he nailed it. And he nailed it. Her mom came home. Okay, and said she looked beautiful. And said she looked beautiful. Who wants to come up and give it a shot? Oh my goodness. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen hands just went up. I'm so proud of you. I would like to come up first. I don't want your look at me. Your hands, if they touch that wheel, could get run over. It's happened before where I accidentally rolled over somebody's fingers with this so i don't want you to touch it okay because i don't want your fingers to get hurt that's why. it was not really a content day just being honest with you it's tuesday um i'm about to leave actually it was a good day um i was gonna make math my focus it, i mean i was gonna make math my focus for you guys today but um my aide ended up having to go to she had like a meeting and so our math couldn't run like it normally runs and so I just said oh well and I didn't film anything else for the day I don't think so yesterday um for first grade I just had them work with some of these I had them play like war with these cards they organized them from least to greatest um today we did more with place value we ended up doing a knockout I can try to remember to put a screenshot on the screen of what the knockout looks like um if you're not familiar I think the ones I get are by Erin Waters on TPT I'll leave it down in the description box for you but you basically make two lines of students and they line up at the whiteboard and the first person to write the answer on the board gets the gets to stay in line and then the person who doesn't get it fast enough gets knocked out they sit down and um, it's just a really it's a really fun kind of review game that's really fast paced and I mix up the teams every time so like we'll play around and then the last person standing wins um, I don't get prizes really and my kids are just now to the point where they can play it without crying so now they know it's just fun it's just for practice and it's okay but after every round I mix up the teams so it's always switching and then um, after they got done with knockout with my kinders they were doing math centers and I was pulling small groups from my back table. We were just working on addition with counters. It was really, really simple. And then I had my kinders start working on a color by code that was addition, um, which is it's pretty challenging for some of my kindergartners. I gave them the hands-on manipulatives. I gave them counters to have with their color by code. Um, and then when first grade was done with their knockout, I said, first graders, find a kindergartner and help them with their color by code. 
And we did that for probably right under 10 minutes. I think that was one of my favorite parts of the day because being a combo teacher, there's lots of different benefits um, and there's lots of ways that I can use it to my advantage. But today it was beautiful. I had some of my first graders walking them through the problem, how to do it using fingers, using counters. And it was just really, really cool to see. So for under 10 minutes, I just got to sit there and enjoy just watching them help each other. So that was really nice. And then we did some made a choice they help me organize the stem bins it's a pretty good day um, so <laughs> tomorrow will be a lot more interesting I'm not gonna ramble but yeah catch up with you <laughs> tomorrow Wednesday today is Wednesday it's a new day um, whew, it's been an emotional day so far so I had to test this morning um, we luckily have testing here at school because of everything that's been going on and I was nervous I wasn't gonna be here today um, which I haven't tested positive once since this entire pandemic, knock on wood, since this entire pandemic started, but I'm good. So <laughs> I was nervous for a moment I was gonna have to leave because of contact tracing and all that. Anyways, we have been reading Hair Love this week, which is one of my absolute favorite picture books. I love it so much. It's one of my faves. And I love that it also has a short that accompanies it on YouTube. Um, if you've never seen it, or if you've never read the book, read the book, then watch the short. I'll link the short in the description box if I remember. But yesterday was our first day reading Hair Love and I didn't film it, um, but we talked about what's important to us. We talked about what's important to our main character, Zuri. And the book is called Hair Love and Zuri's hair is really, really important to her. And that was kind of where, you know, I lead them on the first day, like what's important to her? How do you know her hair is important to her? She gets frustrated when it doesn't look right. And today we get a little bit deeper into the book and talked more um, about inferencing, which is not necessarily something I need to cover, but it's something that I like to cover. In the book, when Zuri, let me get the, let me get the book. In the book, when Zuri wakes up, it is a special day. She's so excited. She talks about how much she loves her hair. Um, and she's looking up different tutorials. She says it's a special day she needs it to look just right her dad tries to help her it doesn't work out she ends up getting frustrated and then they watch a tutorial on how to do her hair and her dad is able to get through it and she's excited and her mom comes home and you can see here her mom looks like so on the first day we just talked about her being glad that her mom was there she was excited to see her and Zuri's hair was really important to her today when we were reading I stopped a little bit more and kind of talked about it um, we noticed a couple more things like this banner that says welcome home we talked more about the mom and her hair and why it might be wrapped up and this is a conversation that I'm really careful about um, because I don't know what's going on in every one of my students lives but I kind of try to feel it out and see if they are familiar with people who have been sick before lost hair and one of my students today did bring it up and um, we talked about inferencing and why would they have like a welcome home banner why do you think they missed her so much do you think she was gone for a short amount of time a long amount of time and then we watched the short and I like to do that whenever we talk about inferencing because in the short Zuri and her dad don't really talk you can there's a couple of parts where they're watching the hair tutorial and the mom is talking but the Zuri and dad don't really talk so it's more about inferencing what's going on and the short is helpful because in the short it actually shows the mom in the hospital and you can really see um, why the mom is wearing the wrap around her head so it's really hard for me to watch because I am already an emotional mess today and I was crying during it and I, kn I looked over and a couple of my other kids were crying but they were laughing and they enjoyed it it's a really really good short and I love to pair it with the book usually on the second or third day not the first day because I like to get them thinking about it but anyways I highly highly recommend it it's a really good activity um, and a really really great book so show me you're ready my turn my turn I can explain the important events in the story that is going to be our goal today we are going to work on explaining what happens in the story we're going to use our magical word be be because 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 so we know that our characters in our story are hey as we are reading today i want you to think about the important parts of the story we're going to talk as we go what did i ask you to do what did i ask you to do what are you going to do Oh, I love that strong choice. Good for her. I want you to look at this picture and I want you to tell me what you notice. Oh, do you see a sign right here? Yes. This sign is actually a really important part of our story. We know that today is a special day. 
Let's see what this sign says. Welcome home, Ma. What do you think that word says? Welcome home, Ma. Mom. Mom. Mm, Mom. Welcome home. Yeah, it's kind of like we zoomed in on it, right? I want you to turn and talk to your partner about this point in the story. Why do you think that there's a banner saying, Welcome home, Mom? Why do you think this is an important part of the story? Turn and talk to a friend. Um, My turn? Your turn. You guys are so good at turning back to me when I say it's my turn. I heard a lot of really, really good points that you guys were making. Raise your hand if you want to share what you said. Why was this an important part of our story? What do you think is going on? Maybe because you had to live in another house and this is her first time coming back. Ooh, not just made an inference. Say inference. Inference. An inference is when you're thinking deeper about the story. You're thinking more about the story and you're figuring out things that the author isn't telling us. She said maybe she had to live somewhere else and is coming home for the first time. That's a good inference. We don't know that to be totally true, but that's making a really good guess based on what you know. Who else is making a really good inference? Oh, maybe it is her birthday. Maybe. That's a really good inference. Yeah, Welcome no home. Cake. Mom, there isn't a cake. That's something to think about, too. What do you think? My hair is mommy, daddy, and me. It's hair love. Now, yesterday, we noticed something about this story about the mom. What did we notice about the mom? Her hair is wrapped up. Her hair is wrapped uh, up. Ew, you said, is she bald? Maybe. She might be bald. Some people, when they don't have hair, it's not funny. When they don't have hair, they wrap it up because it makes them feel more comfortable. What else do we know about this? Like, they missed her, right? They wanted her to come home. So where do you think the mom was that she came home and she's got her hair all wrapped up? I want you to turn and talk to a friend and then we're gonna watch this short. The video. Probably living in Florida. What do you think? Florida? What? I'm gonna go to Hawaii. Wait, what? Say it louder. I think she wants to go to the doctor. You know how it is when you get bald and you have to shave off all your hair? Yeah, when you have to shave off your hair. She said, I think she was at the doctor. We're going to watch a short film on our book and we'll be able to make more inferences with it. So I want you to turn your body towards the board. This film, they're not talking. Remember how we talked about inferencing? Yes. Yeah, some things that the author doesn't tell us just by looking at pictures. This is what they're showing us here. Who's on the tablet? Her, her and her mom. Yeah. Are you What do you notice? What did he do? Change. He changed his clothes because it's a special day. Here's where the part is different in our story, okay? So we guys, so we made some inferences about what was happening and where the mom was, and this film is gonna show us. Turn and tell your partner, what do you think Zuri drew? Queen. A queen? And her mom. Her mom. She's growing hair. She's getting older. When I'm talking, your voice is? Yesterday, when we read this story, we said something was really, really important to Zuri. We said her hair. hair was really important to her. Now, after we read today, what do you think is actually the most important thing to Zuri? Her mom. Her mom. We did that. Normally, we do our shared writing on day two, but I'm just moving that over to the next day. Is it just, just put together? Which two words? Is not. Is not. Isn't. Good. Bread is good for breakfast, but this isn't bread yet. It is eat wheat. Full hour flour will be made from the wheat. Er, ready? First, dough is made. 
next, the dough is shaped and baked. Then it is done. Go take it to the calm corner or do you want to get a book instead? Okay, I'm going to give you a choice. Do you want to move it over there yourself or do you want me to move it? I'll move it, okay. Grape jam is good on bread. But grape wine full of grapes. grapes. Why are there two L's in full? That's his twin brother. Uh, crushed to yum. What's this called? Exclamation. Um, the other really nice thing that happened to me that I wanted to share, if only for me to look back on, is last night while me and John were cooking dinner, I was just messaging my parents and telling them um, all the great things that I've been seeing. And one of my moms came in today and she was just saying how much it meant to her. And then she was kind of telling me a little bit more about like what's going on and just all the, all the ways that she's <laughs> grateful for me. And she talked to me for probably about like five minutes when they drop off in the morning. And I was already crying <laughs> this morning because some of the things that she said really, really hit home for me. Um, so today's just been, it's been an emotional day in the best kind of ways. And it's one of the most important things to me too. And something that she said was that her child, she knows that her child feels safe at school. And she's even said um, when her child was at home and upset or something, they've even said like, oh, I want Miss Call. And um, she was just saying she was grateful for me for really being there and supporting her child and doing all these things. And that is the most important thing to me. It's really nice whenever you're working with a student and they like, you know, do well on something or they get a concept or they're, you know, trying, but then to hear the other side of it where you're making a difference with them emotionally and you're helping them, that is the best part of this job. So I'm going to, actually I don't have anything to prep. I'm gonna drink my coffee and think about what we might be doing next week. <laughs> Good morning, it's Thursday. Yep, it's Thursday. You know what I've learned about myself and about vlogging? I've learned that if I say, or tell you guys I'm gonna do something, things get in the way. So I'm just gonna stop telling you guys what I'm gonna do or what I'm gonna show you and I'm just gonna show you what I show you. <laughs> um, got here a few minutes before contract time and I was looking around the room and I just talked about this on my Instagram stories but you might not follow me over there and my kids have this little cart that I put all of their kitchen things on and you guys have seen it before but I walked in this morning and I was like what is that and it's a little sign and it's a little sign it's bright over here you can see it on there and it just says random things. I think some of my kindergartners were writing it. But it says like no, oh, no, not open dog. Not open dog, something. And they have their little setup and they even put a little basket with like a pen and a notepad. And I was just talking about how I kind of have my students take ownership over the room and their supplies and I don't limit things for them so things that normally would be just for teachers I give them to so like they have like post-it notes and pens and things like that and I have tape oh, it's so bright. tape dispensers and things over here that are meant for them to use or things normally you wouldn't just have out for them but I love seeing what they do and what they create with it that's one of my one of my favorite things um and I also I love treating kids, especially since I teach kinder and first graders, I love treating them like they're not just five years old, in the good sense. I still let them, you know, be five years old. But I love just expecting, or not expecting, I love, I don't know, I guess just giving them more freedom and more responsibility at the same time for things that you wouldn't normally think to. Anyways, a weird kind of way to start today. Also yesterday something that I did was I pulled one of my students to my back table because their parent messaged me and they have just been really wanting to be like more I guess intentional about the things that they do with them so I like retested my um that student on everything and I just sent home a little one page report that I got from ESGI saying these are the exact skills that you can do with them and I just wanted to remind you guys that if you are not using ESGI in your classroom it's one of my favorite teaching tools and you should definitely check it out. I'll leave a link in the description. Oh, also I think I have a code, yep, to save money. So definitely use that too. Just sitting here trying to write the morning message and wrapping my brain around what we're going to do for. And she says, my hair is mommy, daddy, 
and me. What does she mean? My hair is my mommy and my hair is my daddy. They have the same hair because they're what? Family. Because they're family, right? We look the way we look because of our family, right? Our mom and our dad, we have lots of things that make us look like them sometimes, right? So like Maya's hair, is your hair like your mom's? Yeah, that's, okay. is your hair like your mom's too? My mom doesn't have, my mom has purple hair because she dyed it. Because she dyed her hair purple. Uh, my mom has brown hair. Just does our, does the blood from our mom and the blood from our dad go inside of us? Yes and no. The blood doesn't go from your mom and your dad inside of you, but your blood has part of your mom and your dad in it. It's a long conversation. But anyways, yes, her hair is important to her because it's just like her mom's and just like her dad's, right? A kindergartner, you're gonna stay seated. If you are a first grader, you're going to get a clipboard, the paper, and a pencil. She woke up early because she was, it was a special day. I'm a writing superstar. Five angels I know by heart. Capital letter, always first. Fingers, faces, between words. Sound about the best you can. Punctuation at the end. Go back. First graders, make sure you start at the top and we're gonna go all the way across. If you run out of room, you come back down to the bottom. Zuri, finger spaces between words. Woke, say woke. woke. Do you hear a short and lazy O or a strong superhero O? Strong. Strong, strong superhero O. So who do we need at the end of this word? Mommy. We need mommy. mommy E. Say woke. Woke. First sound. Woke. W, w good. Woke. Oh, good. What letter comes next? Who did I need at the end? I do, I need mommy E to reach over to the O and make it say its name. Go back and check. Good, Zuri, whoa, up. up. Finger spaces between words. Up, I need a kindergartner to help me spell up. You. <gasps> Good for yeah. Zuri woke up, up, what letter? P. Oh my goodness, good for it. Go back and check. Zuri woke up early. Say early. 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 What do you hear? R. I hear an R. E R. E R. Oh, kindergartners too. I'm impressed. Zuri woke up early. Earl. Now this last part. We need an ending. What's our ending that can say E at the end? A Y. Zuri woke up early because. And help me out. Say I, I, I. What letter says I? I says I, I, I. Nice job. Say it. It. What do you hear at the end? Oh, very good guess. P says P. 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 Do you remember what letter says T? What letter? Um, T. It is a T. Good for it. Zuri woke up early because it fingers spaces between words. Was. Kindergartners, this is one of our new sight words. The pig was dirty. What's my first letter? W. Good. What's next? A. A. Kindergartners, what's the last letter in was? Hold on one second. What should you be doing? Eyes up here. What's the last letter in was? S. S. Good. We're going to try to stretch this word. Ready? Oh, there are five sounds in this word. Oh, five sounds. First graders, do you hear a blend at the beginning? What two letters? S-P. S-P. Kindergartner, stretch it with me. Special. Eh. What letter says eh? E. E. Say special. S-H. S-H says shh. Oh. What's our ending for oh? E L E L E. It was a special day. I need a kinder. Raise your hand if you want to help me with this one. Kinder. A day. What's the first sound? 
D says D, D, D. It was a special day. I think this Y is in my way. I'm going to go past it. D. What two letters say A? Do you remember? A. <gasps> a Y. You just spelled the word day. Good boy. Punctuation. I do. Should I put it over here? No. Here? Yes. No. Here? Yes. 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 Sitting on the floor. What was your question? Can I have one of those toys? Oh, one of the fidgets? Yeah. Good morning, it's Friday. I I don't know where my brain has been this week. I was just telling um, Kenzie, I Marco Polo her in the morning. And I just knocked over a cup. Ah! My brain has been like all over the place. Like yesterday, one of my kids had to remind me, or he asked about computer lab and I was like, Oh yeah, we need to go right now to computer lab because I was going into my math lesson and I just finished up part of our math centers and then I was like, oh wait, we have computer lab today. Completely forgot. And um, to yesterday, one of my kids also was like, is our hot cocoa party tomorrow? And I was like, it's going to be on Friday. And they were like, what's today? And I was like, yep, it's tomorrow. <laughs> Didn't realize it was Thursday. I've just been literally surviving. Um, so hopefully this vlog hasn't been too jumpy, or if it has, hopefully it's still been helpful. The one thing that I think I've been pouring my energy to into lately, it has been TikTok just because it is one of those things just that just really makes you feel super creative, it's super fun, it's super light, and I feel like you get a lot of like bang for your buck when it comes to your time. Like I can spend like 10 minutes making a TikTok and then I put it out there and it reaches so many people so quickly and I've really been enjoying that aspect to it. So if you haven't been following me on TikTok, I feel like I've been posting some really like good, fun content over there and I'm trying to share more um, like the vlog style clips that you see here, but just like the teaching portions in TikTok too so you can save them easier. Um, so hopefully that's helpful to you guys too. And if you do follow me on TikTok, let me know in the comments below. Uh, the other thing I was gonna say was, yesterday was rough because my kids just, it's basically like they rent, they tried to run the show all day long and I was not having it. And I got to that point in the week where I'm like, nope, we are done. Like we need to stop. We need to know when it's time to work, when it's time to part. There were points in the day yesterday where we were redoing things three, four, five times until they got it right. Um, and I, I feel like one of my biggest tips to you guys, if you feel like you are losing control of your classroom, and this isn't a revolutionary tip, it's just something I think we need to be reminded of every now and then. If you feel like you're losing control of your classroom, just completely stop. Make it your only goal for the day to get a procedure right. Like that's it because I've been struggling this week trying to get through some of my lessons because I'm like, oh no, they know, they know, like they're gonna get it. Like this is just like a flute. No, like they need you to go back and slow down and do those things and they need you to show that you are serious about their expectations because if you show that they're not, they aren't gonna take it seriously either. So one of those things where I had to sit with myself for a minute and be like, nope. As much as I love them and as much as I know they know these procedures or they did know these procedures, they're not showing it to me right now and I cannot have anything less than this. This is what I need right here. Um, so we redid things yesterday four times, five times, and I had to cut some of our lessons short because I was like, okay, I really want them to be successful even during centers yesterday. I didn't pull any groups, didn't pull a single group. What I did the entire time is what I do when I first introduced centers. I walked around to every single student, every single station. That's what I was doing the whole time, was going between, talking to them about their work, and it also helped me see like some of the stuff that they're doing, They, if it's too hard for them, that's what they revert to is playing because they don't know how to do it. So some of the stuff that I gave my kinders this week for the first time, it was a little bit too hard for them and that was part of it too. So I just wanted to kind of share this experience with you guys because a lot of times I come on here and I tell you how great things are going, but it's really important for me to share these things with you too. Like it doesn't go great all of the time. And when it doesn't go great, these are the things that I'm doing. I reverted back to like first time doing centers mainly. And that's what I did. My aide actually could still pull some people because she's in here during that time. Um, but that's what I did. They were successful. They earned a smart cookie and that was it. That was the goal. I just wanted them to be successful in centers. When we cleaned up centers, 
Um, it was a mess. They didn't clean up properly and then they were on the carpet and then as soon as they got to the carpet, some of them were doing like backflips. So I made them all go back to their centers. I said, get out this, get out that, get out that. Had them sit there for like three minutes working in their centers. And then I did the song for clean up and this time they did it right and they earned that smart cookie. Um, it's hard, especially when we are in January, it's hard because at this point in the year, you know your kids know things and I, I know my kids have been out. <laughs> Most of them have been out. And so it was kind of a choice that I had to make. Do I want to revisit these procedures? Do I not? Do I want to do it a little bit? Do I want to do it not at all? Do I want to do it a lot more than I thought I needed to do it? But it doesn't matter what point in the year you are. If your kids are showing you that they need those procedures given again, if they need that practice again, and the way they're showing that to you is probably not in the best way, um, then give it to them. So today I'm hoping will be a little bit easier on me and it should be easier too because we're having our hot cocoa party. Um, we'll probably watch a movie while we do that and I'll pull students to my back table because I have these wonderful self portraits that um, I still have not finished. So we're gonna do that today too. Um, finish up our book. But yeah, I just wanted to have that little conversation with you. Hopefully if you were needing to hear it, there it is and I'll catch up with you later. Thank you.